I am my own critic. I have very high expectations of myself. You get so obsessed by the thought of eating, sleeping, training. I want perfection. That's what I go after. Pradeep Bala is 26 years old. He has muscle dysmorphia, better known as bigorexia. So you wake up at 5.30 every morning and you make five meals. Yeah. Yeah, standard, really. <laughs> it's, 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 it's become um, the norm. When did you first realise you had muscle dysmorphia? Muscle dysmorphia was really recognised within me when I was 18, 19. I wasn't happy when I trained. Um, I, I, it, was, it was continual negative thoughts, even as I trained. If I couldn't get that one extra rep, I would, I would hit myself again. <laughs> Having lived with the condition for more than six years, Pradeep thinks he'll always have it. How often do you go to the gym? Oh, about five or six days a week, depending on the, uh, depending on the protocol. And what were some of the symptoms which made you realise you had bigger exit? I would wake up and all I would think was easy sleep train. While I was in uni, while I was going to bed, while um, I was out socialising, all I would care was, am I eating my meals on time? And am I getting my training session in? Because nothing has mattered to me. Men like Pradeep, who take their training incredibly oh. seriously, are likely to have heard of bigorexia. But many come across the condition online and often diagnose themselves. And it's images of the so-called perfect body within the media, which therapists say is driving their condition. There's much more pressure on men to have a six pack and to be muscled. Although you know, that's been around for women for quite a long time, mm. pressures in magazines and in adverts and so on. And it might actually be that women maybe have actually adjusted a little bit and have become better prepared than men to deal with all these images and these pressures. I get along. Sarah Loins believes her son Ollie had bigorexia and it ended up taking over his life. There was just no getting through to Ollie at all, just no getting through to him about what he was doing to his body. Ollie started taking dangerous amounts of steroids to try and get bigger. Despite suffering two heart attacks and a stroke, he continued working out. Ollie had a third heart attack at the age of 20. This time, it killed him. Still miss him now, still talk about him. There's not a day that goes by where we don't mention Ollie's name. Sarah hopes other men will learn from her son's experience and come forward to talk about the condition. Atta Ahmed, BBC News.